everyone, Christina here. Welcome to day 19 of the holiday card series for 2017. Today I'm going to be using the Sparkle and Cheer stamp set from Art Impressions, as well as the Christmas sweater background from Simon Says Stamp. I'll actually add a third stamp set in here in a minute for the greeting on the card, but for now these are the two stamp sets I'll be using. I'm starting out with some green cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. This is Green Apple, and I'm scoring that at five and a half to create a top folding card. I'm going to take that card base and I'm actually going to um, just put a little bit of adhesive in the card to keep it shut and then I'm putting it into my misty stamp positioning tool. I'm going to use some emerald green delicata ink today and because this stamp that I'm using is a cling stamp so it's a little bit thicker than a clear stamp I've removed the foam area or that big foam pad inside the misty tool pressing that down onto my card front, making sure I get all of those little intricate areas. And then I'm going to lift this up and I will have the most beautiful pattern on the front of my card. This is going to be the background for this uh, to kind of go behind the scene that I'm going to paint. So I really love that Delicata ink. It's a little bit hard to see on camera, but it has a little bit of a shimmer and sheen to it. So to clean up this background stamp, I was using a baby wipe, but there were so many small little intricate areas. I actually ended up taking this to a sink and using a nail brush and brushing it with a little bit of hand soap to clean off that stamp. It was a really easy way to clean that stamp. So if you're looking for a way to clean your stamps and stencils, I really recommend a nail brush. I'll have that linked down in the supply section below if you want to check that out. I now have a 5x7 sheet of Strathmore cold press watercolor paper and I'm inking up this stamp from Art Impressions in some Versifying Onyx Black ink. This is a waterproof pigment ink so it's really great if you're going to, do, going to do watercolor over the top like I'm doing today. And I'm also taking my time in stamping this. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to press too much and have some of the lines thicken up as they're stamped. So I actually stamped that four times in my Misty tool and just gently stamping it down each time. Now using the Mission Gold watercolor set, the Magello Mission Gold watercolor set. And I'm actually going to paint this little scene exactly like the packaging. Same colors and everything. The only thing I did change was the tones of the colors a little bit and also the scarf on the bunny. I decided to paint that in green instead of gray. But basically I'm painting this exactly like the example on the packaging. And I've said this in the past and I'll say it again. I appreciate so much how Art Impressions puts examples of their images colored on their packaging. In fact, you may have noticed that a lot of the stamp sets that I use in videos, I have taken out of their original packaging and I put them in stamp storage pockets. But when it comes to Art Impressions images, I keep them in their original packaging because I find the examples of these images is so valuable and I turn to it all the time. Now I have a degree in graphic design and fine art, but I was never really good at figuring out where shadows were for a scene. So this just really aids me when I paint all of these images. And if you're like me and you struggle with that, um, keep your packaging out for your art impression stamps because it comes in handy. So instead of doing a really watercolory look where I've got lots of color variation and showing um, kind of different blooms of color, I decided to paint this very flat. So it is very similar to that example on the packaging. Um, I didn't do a lot of blending. It was a lot of um, harsh lines on the shadows, but I thought it turned out great and it has a lot of character with this cute image with this snowman. Adding some shading in, I basically did a light version of each color and a dark version of each color and I just used the dark version for coming in and adding shadows. So particularly on the hat I originally painted it quite pale and then I realized that I wanted it to be the same tones as the brown bunny. So I did end up darkening up that hat a little bit and then coming in with the same shading uh, color that I used for the bunny. So as far as the background goes behind this little scene, I wet the entire area that where I wanted there to be sky with clean water. And then I dropped in a nice blue shade and I tried to bring it around that scene, trying to get it all the way up to the edge. And I really had to work with this quite a bit to get it to work um, because 
if you've done any color, any kind of watercoloring, you'll in a large area like this, you'll remember or you'll know this that sometimes it really tends to dry, and like with some areas you're drying faster than others, and that's when you get a really harsh line in your watercoloring. And I really wanted that whole sky scene to be really soft, so I had to add lots of water as I went along so that I could get those colors to really soften out. Then used my heat tool to dry that. Now I'm using the large scalloped, let's see, large stitched scallop frames from Avriel, and I'm actually going to die cut this twice. I'm going to only do a partial die cutting on each one because I want this uh, whole area to be a little bit taller than what it is on the actual die. So I'm only going to put my cutting pad about a little past halfway, and that area that's hanging out of that cutting pad will not be cut. The only area that will be cut is what's completely in the die cutting sandwich. So I'm going to put this through my Big Shot machine. And then when I run it through, you'll be able to see that the bottom portion of this die didn't actually cut because it was hanging outside of that die cutting sandwich. So I'm going to take this die and I'm going to kind of position it so that it's just down one more scallop. And you can kind of wiggle the die around and kind of feel for when it kind of snaps in place. You'll be able to feel, feel it kind of uh, settle into the valley of what's already cut. And then I use some more post-it tape to keep it in place. And then I run it through my Big Shot machine. And this time with the top portion of that die outside of the die cutting sandwich. And that makes it so that that top portion does not cut. So I basically cut the top portion and the bottom portion. And the middle portion was cut twice because that's what overlapped. So this whole scallop rectangle is a little bit taller than the original die cut, but this is a great way to die cut your images if you need a little more space uh, on the bottom or top or even on the sides. So I'm using the Happy Holidays stamp set from Avriel, and I'm using this stamp set in particular because it has some of the smallest, skinniest one line Christmas greetings that I've seen. And I really wanted something really small and narrow so that it would fit in that area below the sitting snowman, that white area that I've extended out by doing that die cutting. So I've stamped the greeting in Versamark ink, and then I'm putting some Brutus Monroe alabaster embossing powder over the top, and then heat setting that until it's smooth and melted. I'm gonna cut off this strip so that it's very, very narrow. I really want a tiny little red strip along the bottom of this card. I then put some foam tape behind my watercolored piece and I'm going to place that over the top of my stamped background and I'm gonna get it pretty centered as best I can and I'll press that down with my fingertips until it's adhered permanently. I then use my tweezers to help me place this greeting strip and I put a little bit of foam adhesive behind the greeting as well. To finish off the card, I'm gonna add some details onto this painting. I'm using a Jelly Roll pen. This is the 05 fine size I'm going to add some cute little stripes onto the bunny scarf. I'm also adding some small polka dots over the snowman scarf. And I'm going to add a few little dots right over those berries on the snowman's hat as well. Just so that it looks like there's a little bit of a shine or a little bit of a glare on those berries. So they look a little bit more dimensional. I also took a black pen and I went over the snowman's eyes because stamping this over some textured watercolor paper kind of left some of the eye missing the, the solid black of the pupils. So I added that over the eyes and then I brought in that white gel pen and I put the glare or the highlight back into his eyes. To finish off all the detail, I took a clear sparkle pen. This is a Crafter's Companion Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. And I went over all of the red areas on the card, including the bird's hat, the band on the hat and the berries, and also the snowman's coat. So that finishes the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is such a fun little image and I'm so glad I was able to use it. Uh, if you want to see more details and the supply list for this card, please check out my blog and also the video description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys very soon for day 20 of the holiday card series.